Okay, Roger Mud Fossil University today trying to make archaeologists understand that geologists have led them astray. Now, the archaeologists are trying to understand what they see by the rock that they are looking at, and they have no clue about the rock that they are looking at, and neither do the geologists that they consult. Now, let's listen to this, and I will make some statements and tell you why these people have no clue what they're doing, and they will never figure it out until they understand the actual origin of the stones that are in their hand. The quest for the lost city begins a world away from the jungles of Central America. Dr. Neil Brody of Cambridge University, an expert on looting in the art world, is leader of the expedition in search of Site Q. Now they're going down to the ancient Mayan ruin. Proof that Site Q exists emerged in the 1960s. As if from nowhere, an exquisite set of carved limestone panels. No, an exquisite set of molded processed stone emerged. These are, these are not carved limestone. Limestone is possible to carve absolutely, but it is not homogenous, and I believe these are homogenous. Appeared on the Western art market. There's no blood anywhere that I can see on From these. no known Mayan city, some were covered with enigmatic hieroglyphs. Others depicted players of the mystic. Somebody molded that. All of the ancient statuary, virtually all of it that is homogenous in nature and they call granite, is not natural and carved. It is molded after it was ground up and the metals were extracted. And that's what I see here. Now, I'm seeing a couple little spots that, you know, I mean, that's possible they're blood vessels, but I don't think so. I think this was pinned to something. Anyway. Serious Mayan ball game. To experts, it was clear the panels had once fitted together, decorating a temple stairway. It's not so apparent to me, but... Bought separately by various private collectors and museums. What is apparent to me is this. That is not carved stone. That is pressed stone. And they had a big, like, the same thing they do with the clay tablets. The same sort of thing. It's Roger Mudfossil University, and I want to show you why archaeologists have been misled by a geologist, because that is not a natural stone. That is a reprocessed stone. And all of these things are made out of, out of ground up rock, which was at that time very soft, because it was just after the Great Flood. These are bodies of creatures. I'm telling you that's a fact, and I show this many, many ways, and they are misled because they think these have to be harvested from some special place, and then they carve them. Not the case at all. Just exclaimed, uh, and despite being covered in sweat, dirty, muddy, uh, bug-bitten, I was ecstatic because it was a signal, even before we had arrived at La Corona, that this may be the place, this may be the site queue that we had been looking for. Stuart was excited because the name Red Turkey is known from only one other Mayan inscription. It's the name of the ball player on the site queue panel in the Art Institute of Chicago. Well, Red Turkey's name wasn't the only clue. As we continued our explorations... And All right, here it comes. Now listen, he, they, they're trying to figure out where did this thing come from. So listen, this is how they're coming up with these answers we came across the big plaza there, we realized that the looters had been messing around with a very low building that seemed to have had a staircase. Just the state of exhaustion we were in, or at least I was in, I didn't think about the possibility of maybe taking a sample of the stone near that possible stairway and maybe comparing it to Saiku blocks we know from collections. We also didn't have permission to do that, but I had always wanted to get that sample. 
Right. And the reason he wants to get that sample is to compare it to the other thing. So if you grind up flesh over here and grind up flesh over there, it makes no difference. And the same thing over at Stonehenge. 100% of Stonehenge is body parts. They didn't have Saracen stone. They had to go some special place to get it. That was a creature that died there. His body is there, and they made it into a special ceremonial place. Guess what that's called? The Stonehenge Heel Stone. That is a giant's foot. And where it goes underneath, it exactly follows the same size. And that's where the blood is leaking out. This, I, I looked at this very carefully. This is not just some chunk of stone sticking out of the ground. That's a giant's foot. And I looked at all the other stones at, at um, Stonehenge with 3D close-ups. You know, in, in a virtual tour of the place, you could do it, and and 100%, absolutely no question whatsoever. I see they are bits and pieces of 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 a giant, a huge, enormous giant. All right, I have a few papers on granite, but basically, it's it's as simple as this. There's granite is an intrusive, means it's not supposed to be where it's found formation that results in coarse textured rock. Individual mineral grains are easy to see. The grains are quite large compared to basalt crystals. Now, what about basalt? In basalt, the granules are very, uh, I'm sorry, in the granite, the granules are very well mixed and quite uniform and do not contain any metals to speak of. Rock does not come in that process form naturally. It is not a natural process form, and I will show you pictures to prove what I'm saying. Now, granite intrusions, means it's not supposed to be there, with no metals, are often located next to orogenic mineral systems, which contain all the metals of the uh, high value metals, gold, copper, zinc, uh, zinc um, silver, platinum, all in high proportions. Now, this is a worldwide average of chemical composition of granite, 2,485 different specimens. There's no precious metals in here to speak of, none. Well, you know, none to it, of any amount. All the platinum group metals are gone. So let's see what granite really, the, the granite that they show, really is ground up meat. All right, this is a granite countertop, and it's big, and the only piece of, of metal I could really find with any easiness is that one little piece right there, and I look pretty well. Now, what do we see here? These are chunks. These are ground-up chunks of tendons and bone bits and, you know, the silicon, the red blood the dark black blood, which is the FeO2, and the FeO3 is the red blood. This is what's left over after you grind up a creature that was still moist and turn it into metals by slurs, you know, taking off the, the metals, leaching them out. They were alchemists. They knew what they were doing. And they had high, equip high tech equipment doing it. Well, that's granite right there. I mean, it's so completely obvious that that is not natural. And this is what all that statuary is made of, and all those sarcophaguses and all that stuff. How did they get this inside of these tombs? They poured all these things in place. They didn't carry them around from here to there, and, and they, you can only find this special stone in one place. No, you grind up meat here, you grind up meat there, it comes out the same. Now, that is natural stone. That's natural stone. That was a creature... Of, at one time, that was in a creature's body. I'm sorry, that the whole world is made out of biology, and it's not just our world. And here, there's the high-tech equipment. This is Fuerte de Sempiata, Bolivia. That is a tank tracks and a high-tech vehicle using to harvest this wet, obviously wet because it's sinking into it, tendon. And that tendon was made to build walls in the back. They put them here and they were putty. When they put them in, they were still wet. And this one here, this particular stone right here, is this one. And that 
has this is the blood and stuff and this is where you want to harvest stuff from this kind of color you get this from here and then we want to present them I, I have another video going up or it's up now about harvesting the biological material so no and you don't just scrape it right off of there you could do all the things that I show in the harvest video and then you got to get in deep inside of it not deep deep but you got to go in a quarter of an inch or so and then after that then that specimen should be perfectly what you're going to get out of there is what's inside that rock and if what's inside of that rock was inside of a person's body or a creature's body and that stuff when we get it to the to the lab they'll say if if it was a creature or was just a rock piece of steel or a, whatever like a piece of you know and I'm, I'm telling you this these are all biological things and that's the only way we're going to be able to ever get them to look at it is to submit these samples so anyway that's how they harvested this stuff it was all wet when it was put in place and some of it's rotting away very poorly built wall I mean the guy was you know this must have been the slums you know you can see the stone was soft after the great flood people could just put their hands right through it like marshmallows now, I follow Brian Forrester who does fabulous work he goes around and looks for all of these kind of crazy things and says well how did this happen how did that happen well then he asks a geologist and they just nonsense and then he accepts that because I think they would hurt him if he didn't literally to destroy his business now I'm here to try to help you Brian because what you see my friend is this stuff here is uh, that's from biology that right there is their, their um, ligament attachments right and that is an, a natural separation nobody cut that and that's the same kind of attachment as um, Krishna's butterball and uh, I have a bunch of different shots that show this sort of stuff but uh, the the things that are just just missed because they're not allowed to be seen are, it's overwhelming and uh, and then I asked Brian to pre present this alternative you know I'm saying these were soft it was right after the great flood they gouged with their hands and made caves there was people here with well let's just take a look what, what they were here with all right this goes back a couple of years ago i've been reporting on this over and over and this doesn't seem to kick into anybody these were actual tracks from a tracked vehicle that cut these slabs these are just like tractor uh, um, tank tracks to keep it elevated from sinking into a wet tendon and then they took those slabs and here's another place they did the same thing same exact machine different area and then they took those slabs and they moved them and here's another one it's a four-wheel drive tire another tendon they like tendons that's they took and cut these slabs off of that tendon and moved those slabs back there to make walls and uh, and that's why they fit together no seams or anything same stuff here that's meat those that's meat nobody just did that no oh, let's just make this fancy stuff the whole wall is a big wall of meat <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, it's time for the archaeologists to know what they're even working with. They're working with stuff they don't even know what they're touching. And, and then they're trying to figure out how it got there. You're never going to figure it out until you know what it is you're working with. These are all different muscles. And they're all over the earth, those muscles. See, this, they even call them the types of muscles they are. These are striations, uh, uh, foliations of the earth. And that's what they find under the earth. These are what's in the earth. And uh, I have so much evidence on this, it's embarrassing, actually.